Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and on today's episode of Beat the Icon, we're taking a look at the K-Bar knife. It's undoubtedly the most iconic combat knife ever created and it's quite possibly the most recognizable fixed blade in the world today, but is it the best? Introduced during World War II, a more technical name for this knife pattern is actually the Mark II Fighting Knife. And that's because K-Bar is not the only company that made this knife back in the day. Other knife companies to support the war effort were making this knife. I've got a vintage Camillus right here that I own. As you can see, it's pretty much the exact same thing. And some of those companies are still making their versions today, including folks like Case Knives. You can still get their version of the Mark II as well. But just like major brand names like Kleenex or Band-Aid or even Buck Knife, the K-Bar name is what became synonymous with this highly successful knife. As for what it is, it's basically just a lengthened version of stacked leather hunting knives that were available at the time, just sized up for use on the front lines. What you get is a seven inch blade. They were made of various carbon steels at the time. This modern K-Bar version is made with 1095 CV. You've got that classic clip point shape with a nice deep swedge for a very acute tip and a fuller along both sides to remove a little bit of weight and alter the balance just a little bit. We've got a stacked leather handle that runs over a stick tang underneath. The handle shape on these modern versions are oval to help it keep from twisting in your hand too much. It indexes nicely and grooves cut into it to add a little bit of extra traction. Now the shape on some of the classic examples or even like the modern case version here don't have that oval structure going on. They're more of a, uh, a full rounded over thing. So traditional historical examples may vary. At the butt of the knife, we've got a rounded plate securing that full length stick tang. Oftentimes these got used for hammering and pounding on things. And the other defining feature is that stamped metal cross guard. Not too big, but definitely enough to keep you from sliding forward and to protect your hands from an enemy combatant's melee weapons as well. The nice thing about this knife overall is it gives you a lot of reach, a lot of penetration power, but it's not something that was overly heavy. It has a certain liveliness to it that a lot of modern knives, even ones attempting to uh, come after the K-Bar, I don't think quite replicate, but you've got that nice thing right here. Not super thick on the steel, but still sturdy enough to survive the front lines and to survive nearly a century at this point afterwards. The sheath on the modern versions is just a classic stitched leather affair right here with a drop loop and retention strap. Classic versions, uh, you know, wartime versions, sometimes the sheath materials uh, may vary. I know on my Camillus, I've got what I believe is a Bakelite sheath on it. So that's that, but modern versions, just nice classic leather like this. As for other alternatives to the K-Bar, there are some out there, however. Let's see how they stack up. We're not gonna look far first, actually, because you can stay within K-Bar's lineup and check out the Extreme knife right here, the D2 Extreme version of the classic K-Bar knife. Same size and shape of blade, but you've got D2 tool steel here, a little less tough than the uh, 1095 CV of the current models, but more edge retention also swapped out the leather for Craton G handles. They've got a little bit of a grippy texture. Then instead of the stamped metal cross guard, we've got a cast cross guard right here. Uh, technically not a cross guard, I guess. It's mainly, mainly just on the index finger side and the butt plate has been extended the same way towards uh, the direction of your fingers and added a lanyard lashing point on the back. So this is also an option. In addition to greater edge retention on this version, you've also got a sheath system with more retention. As you can see, it's injection molded, clicks in right there, and you actually have to push that back a little bit in order to draw the sheath. It disengages that little tab right there. So that's the modern version of the, uh, the K-Bar knife that K-Bar still makes. But let's wind the clock back to World War II a little bit and take a look at some of the contemporaries of the classic K-Bar. Because it was just one answer to the call that was put out by the US government for fighting knives for frontline troops. There were some other companies that came up with their own solutions and they're remarkably similar in many ways. Probably the most iconic and possibly even deserving of its own Beat the Icon episode is the Randall Model 1. 
Here it is in stacked leather configuration. As you can see, lots of similarities with the classic K-Bar. They would have been carbon steel at the time. Today you can get them in carbon or stainless, but being a handmade product versus a mass produced knife like the K-Bar, wait times on these are a bit longer. But essentially you've got the same liveliness that the classic K-Bar does. You've got similar construction, although you do have a protruding uh, attachment point here at the back instead of the flat butt plate. I would say the main substantive advantage that the uh, Randall might give you over something like the K-Bar is the Ricasso area right here. Taking cues from classic Bowie knives, there is enough space to hook your finger in front of the guard without your finger touching that sharpened edge to aid in removing this if it gets stuck in a target. You've got a little bit of space there on the K-Bar, but you might be touching the edge. You might have to go with the uh, on the back side to uh, help you in that case on the K-Bar. The other thing the Randall's gonna give you is a sharpened rear swedge, which there's nothing to stop service members from sharpening the swedges on their classic Mark IIs, but it's not something uh, that came from the factory that way, at least not typically. Now, if you don't have the money or the time to wait for a uh, Randall Model 1, check out the Blackjack uh, Model 7. Less expensive than a Randall, still quite a bit pricier than the uh, $100 a modern K-Bar will run you, however. The next World War II era knife to take a look at is the Ek Commando Model 5. This is a modern version of it, which interestingly, in the last decade, K-Bar actually purchased the Ek brand name and produces the current versions of it. Let's talk about it here. Price on the modern one is about 127 bucks. You've got just under seven inches of that 1095 CV carbon steel. Again, same factory making it as the classic K-Bar. Here it is next to the classic K-Bar, so you can compare pretty much the same size. You've got the agility on this knife too, which is interesting because you've got a full tang on this knife as opposed to the uh, narrower stick tang of the classic K-Bar. That and the fact that it's protruding here at the back, it was actually uh, advertised as being able to use to help pry open crates and that sort of thing with that back end. So you lose a little bit of the, uh, the hammering potential, but you get something else instead. Another advantage of the full tang design was the way they did the handles back in the day. Now they're injection molded and come with these X head fasteners bolting it onto the full tang. But originally they were actually supplies, supplied with wood and the rivets were poured lead going through both sides. And the advantage of that is if they happen to start coming loose or getting a little rattly, all you need is a rock or something to hammer on it and you could literally pound them back into a nice tight configuration. Pound it back into place and keep on going. So that was a pretty cool thing and one of the differentiators back in the day. And even though you're not gonna be able to pound them back into place, that full tank construction is still a differentiator today. Sheath system on this, I should mention, very similar to that K-Bar Extreme. Injection molded, you gotta push the, uh, the back plate out of the way a little bit to disengage it from the cross guard. Oh, and one more thing, because the cross guard on the thumb side angles forward, it's a li little easier to push off of than on the classic K-Bar. All right, we've got one more contemporary to talk about. Uh, and it's one that might not be obvious unless you know the knife's history. And that is the Buck 119 Special. This was also uh, designed and released in response to that call to arms in World War II. Very similar to the K-Bar knife. It's a little bit shorter. You've only got a six inch blade, but it essentially follows the same playbook. Even though the original versions did not have the fuller uh, that was introduced a little bit later, I think in the 50s. but remarkably similar in that it was, again, just a lengthened version of hunting knives that were available at the time. Modern versions of this knife come with 420HC stainless steel. You can also get them uh, with upgraded powder metallurgy versions. Those come with micarta handles or you can go with the classic phenolic handle right here, uh, which kind of echoes back to the original construction. They, those during World War II uh, that I know of were never available with stacked leather handles. You always had, I think they were Lucite at the time, actually. The handles as a result are a little bit blockier than the oval selection on the uh, K-Bar, but still quite comfortable. And you've got a little bit of hook at the back to keep the knife from slipping forward. The guard on the forward section is a little more subtle on the thumb side, so it's a little easier to get up and around if you wanted to do more detail work with it. 
As far as advantages of the uh, 119 Special over the modern K-Bar, it is a little bit more compact. That could be a plus or a minus depending on your needs, but it's going to be a little easier to maneuver. It's going to be a little more lively actually as well. Uh, also the price comes in about $75. So it's, you know, 75% of the price of the standard K-Bar. You've also got, in my opinion, one of the best, at least one of my favorite, if not my favorite production made leather sheath on the market. You've got a retention strap to hold the handle in, but it's the snap placement that really sets it apart. It's on the back side and tucked in towards the body, which makes it much less likely to snag and come, come open than other designs that oftentimes have straps that point forward and snap from the outside. Walking past something, kind of easy for those to come undone sometimes. This is a phenomenal solution. Just snap it, unsnap it, and it stays right out of the way when you draw the knife. So now we're gonna bridge to the modern stuff, but there's one kind of link that I wanna talk about in between, and that comes in the Vietnam era with the MACV SOG knife, or the MACV SOG buoy. Now, SOG, the current company, uh, didn't come around until the 90s, but they made their name and produced a phenomenal version of that knife with their SOG buoy. You can get it with stacked leather handles and a six and a half or seven and a half inch blade when you can get them. Unfortunately, we didn't even have one on the filming day. So I do have their seal pup here, which is smaller, but it carries some of those same kind of design cues into their lineup. Uh, the SOG buoy, the seven and a half inch version is about $250, OS 8 stainless, stacked leather handle, and this distinctive spine treatment. I think where that SOG buoy really shines is it's got even more attitude than the classic K-Bar and even more size with the seven and a half inch version or you know, scale it back a bit with the uh, six and a half. You've also got on the, uh, that full size SOG buoy, you've got the space to hook your finger above the, the, your index finger in front of the guard and help remove it from the target. It's got that cue uh, taken over from classic buoys as well. Uh, but if you don't have 250 bucks and you want a, a truly smaller knife than the classic K-Bar, the Seal Pup here might not be a bad thing. Coming in just over $90 for about a five inch blade. All right, let's pull it forward to more uh, modern stuff. And the cool thing about you know the modern uh, marketplace for K-Bar alternatives is you can really bracket the performance and price point of that $100 1095 CV blade. We're gonna start with a couple affordable options. Now, Ontario did produce a, uh, a version with a stacked leather handle of the Mark II uh, up until very recently. I, I hope they're gonna keep producing it, however, with the new ownership they've recently uh, undergone. But right now you still can get the Ontario SP1, which, is very affordable compared to the classic K-Bar, less than half the price, yet it's still made in the USA. It's coming in about 46 bucks. You've got a carbon steel blade. I believe they're 1075 uh, at the moment. Uh, yep, just check the specs, that is true. But it's the same classic blade. You've got an injection molded handle with a more stylish cross guard and a beak at the back but it's got the same cues with those grooves to give you extra grip, even though the rubbery texture here gives you grip. This truly, while you can still get it, is like the, like the cheap K-Bar that you can get. I don't, say, I don't wanna say it's cheaply built because the Spec Plus series that this is part of has been shown to be insanely and very durable, phenomenal value too. Now for that money, you are getting a fairly simple nylon sheath, but at about 45 bucks, it's really hard to complain. Bumping things up a little bit price-wise, you've got the Taiwanese made Cold Steel Leatherneck series. Here it is next to the classic K-Bar, a little bit broader on the blade and the handle for that matter, and a longer straight clip point going on. Price on these are about $68, uh, so it's uh, a decent chunk of change less than the classic. For that, you're getting a German-made D2 steel blade. Again, less toughness, but more edge retention than the classic. Uh, you've got a hollow grind on this knife, which I haven't really talked grinds so much uh, earlier. The classic K-Bar has a saber height flat grind. The Randall comes with a hollow grind. Uh, the Eck flat, the Buck also has a hollow grind. Uh, the Sogs are also hollow, I believe, and then a flat grind here on the 
Ontario, but very stout, very short flat grind there. So it maintains a bit of strength versus going with a full flat. Which interestingly, early versions of the Leatherneck did have a full flat grind, but the current versions are going with this Sabre Height hollow grind instead. Handles are rubberized with plenty of texture there. You've got very similar back plate uh, or base plate to the standard K-Bar, but you can see the width of that full length tang is definitely thicker or, or wider than the classic K-Bars there. So that could give you some extra strength uh, to compensate for the less tough steel that it is using there. Same thing on the geometry, it's just a hair thicker than the classic K-Bar as well. Sheath, cold steel always does a good job. It's injection molded. You've got versatility in the attachment options if you don't like the included nylon strap that has a snap and Velcro to help you remove it when you want it to, but stay put when you want it to do that. Retention snap on the front, but if you want to uh, attach aftermarket stuff, there's plenty of versatility in that design. So now let's go to the opposite end of the, uh, the modern price bracketing of uh, the classic K-Bar. I've got this right here. Spartan Blades made this version of the K-Bar and because Spartan Blades and K-Bar actually have a business relationship together, this is actually marked K-Bar on the back. There you go. It is virtually identical to the design or the shape of the classic K-Bar. The main difference being the guard, as you can see. The thumb side, easier to get around it when you want to. But the big news here is the blade steel. Everybody's favorite nowadays, CPM Magna Cut. It is a stainless steel that is both very tough and holds an edge a long time in a you know combination of those three traits that no other steel has been able to achieve to date, which is a very impressive thing and very cool to see on a classic design like this. They come with coated blades, less for uh, corrosion resistance, since you don't need that uh, with Magna Cut, more to kind of dull down how shiny and bright they are. Now, because Magna Cut is so much better uh, when wet than a carbon steel blade, it seems appropriate here that they went with a rubberized handle, but same oval shape, same grooves for extra grip, and backplate here at the bottom. Really awesome knife. Price, however, is gonna cost you 335 bucks nowadays. I should mention also sheath on that knife uh, is black leather, but it's essentially the same as the modern uh, K-Bar leather sheaths. Next up, we've got something that leans a little bit more into the vibes of more modern survival knife design, and that's the Becker BK7, which was actually designed as an exercise of you know, remaking the classic K-Bar in a Becker format. Now here it is against the classic K-Bar. You can see you've got a seven inch blade all around, broader on the Becker, straight clip point, high flat grind on the Becker, so a bit slicier, but thicker, so a bit more toughness there, or a bit more strength, I should say. Here's where things get extra interesting. The modern Becker knives are also produced by K-Bar. So this is the, uh, the third knife here where like the K-Bar's best competition is another K-Bar in a way. The most impressive thing to me, however, is the Becker, even though it's got a full tang construction and thicker steel, is barely heavier than the classic K-Bars. Like two or three ounces uh, is the difference between the two, which is really impressive because it does feel like you're getting significantly more knife. And that weight difference is primarily, the handle is the biggest thing. Leather, when you stack them up like that on the classic K-Bar, the weight adds up. These handles are injection molded and hollowed on the inside, so there's a lot less weight to deal with there. But man, the shape of a Becker knife handle, if you've ever held one, you know, it is very, very comfortable indeed. The other difference over the, uh, the Becker being only the second full tang knife we've looked at so far, it does have a protruding full tang here at the back. Maybe not quite as good for prying as the Eck knife from earlier, but with the 3 16th inch thick blade steel, you might be able to do some hammering if you're accurate, but other pounding tasks will uh, be well served right here. Now, I mentioned the higher flat grind on this knife, that's gonna increase the versatility on this knife for outside of the combat rolls. And same thing with the guard here, and that there really isn't one. There's a little bit of forward finger guard protection, 
but very easy to get around, not obtrusive, and you do have a thumb ramp on the back, but no guard to get in the way. The sheath on the Becker also leans into uh, more modern survival style trends. You do have the strap there on the back with Velcro and a snap, so that it stays put when you want it, but can be removed when you need it to. Retention snap on the top for the handles and an extra pocket on the front for storing extra goodies, sharpeners, what have you, and a little sheath for a companion knife. The Becker Remora will also fit in there, which is pretty cool. Next, we're gonna continue with some knives kind of constructed along these same veins, that is bolted on handles. Uh, cool thing with the Becker, you only need one driver on the one side because the other side is a captive hex, basically. Not captive, but it is hex shaped to hold the hex bolt in place. Uh, this next knife is the Half Breed Blades Large Infantry. And it uses kind of the similar, you know, bolted on handle style. In this case, it is G10, but the blade obviously hews way more closely to the classic K-Bar than the, uh, the Becker right there does. Price on it is a bit more dear, however. This is a $275 knife right here. It is thicker than the classic K-Bar, as you can see, and the weight on this is a bit more substantial. It has less of a, like an agile flicky feel to it in comparison. It feels like it's a little bit more of a hammer in a way. Steel is D2 with a hollow grind. You can get it with or without these partial serrations. You've got plenty of jimping here if you are choking up on, onto the spine with your thumb, which you can do because of that shortened rear guard. But all the edges on it are chamfered, so even though you've got that extra traction, it's not sharp under your fingers, which is nice. Same thing with the handles there. It looks like it might have some sharp edges due to its kind of mountain tread style texture, but in hand, it's not that bad at all. And if you're wearing combat gloves, it's gonna be unnoticeable while giving you extra traction. The protruding tang on this full tang knife design does come to a slightly rounded off point, keeps it a little more comfortable in use, but still is gonna be able to concentrate force really effectively if used as a striking piece, which is something we haven't seen on any of the competition so far. Sheath on this is going to be Kydex. It's going to come with a Techlock style attachment as well for a lot of versatility in mounting options. All right, what if the seven inch blade on the K-Bar is just not quite enough? We'll give you another half inch. How about the Topps US Combat Knife? Very, very clearly influenced by the classic K-Bar, but just gives you a little bit more. Price on these uh, is about $190 right now, made in Idaho. You've got a seven and a half inch blade, very, very thick. I mean, that's a full quarter inch thick right there. This definitely does not have the same agility as the classic K-Bar, but it feels like you could almost get some light chopping in, maybe even more than slightly light chopping in with a blade like this. 1095 carbon steel with that kind of thickness is gonna be very tough. You've got a very short flat grind on it, so the geometry is not gonna be a slicey thing. This is more just a combat wedge, in my opinion. The guard on this is actually part of the knife blade itself, rather than a second piece. We saw that on the half breed just now as well. And you've got linen micarta handles here with that same grooved texture or grooved pattern, very inspired by the classic K-Bar. You've also got something that's a nod to the other kind of survival knives that Tops makes the outdoor focus stuff in that you've got a bow drill divot on either side of this knife, which can be used as a bearing block with the knife in the sheath, I would always recommend for primitive fire starting, which is pretty neat. The sheath on the tops is much like the Becker, but you've got even more Molly compatibility on the back. You've got the pocket there on the front, similar basic style, but maybe not super basic, a little bit extra going on here, very durable. While we're talking bigger alternatives, let's show something a little more classic K-Bar uh, inspired, perhaps. The Felkneven Odin Northern Light Bowie Knife. 7.9 inches on the blade, nearly an eight inch blade here. Quite a bit more expensive, $550. It's definitely a more premium combat fighting style knife. And even though no one's probably carrying this on the front lines, it is still leaning into that uh, combat kind of style, and that is mostly due to the guard, I would say, which is there, but it's short enough. You could use this for other stuff pretty easily. It's very easy to get the thumb around that, as you can see. The steel here, as you can see, is on the thicker side. That's over a quarter inch thick, actually. Um, 
6.5 millimeter. Yeah, so 0.26 technically over a quarter inch. And it is a laminated steel. You've actually got a VG10 core on this blade with other steel sandwiched on the outside. And it is a full height or very nearly full height convex grind on this knife as well with no secondary bevel. Very different in cutting character to the rest of these knives so far. Easier to kind of point the edge right where you want it to be when you're skating along something, which is interesting and maybe not a combat uh, specific requirement, but there you go. And you've got the stacked leather handle oval style here going on. No grooves, but that's a nice thing too. It feels a little more comfortable for other types of work where you don't need that ultimate grip. Very nice leather sheath with this knife as well. I've got one other alternative here to the K-Bar, which is actually made by K-Bar yet again. Uh, it is the Spartan Blades professional grade Harsey Fighter. Uh, it is made by K-Bar for the Spartan brand in this case. You've got a just over six inch blade. So it is a little bit shorter than the classic K-Bar, but when you stack it up from where your, your hand actually ends one to the other, it's not as big of a difference as the on paper measurements might make it seem. Steel is 1095 CV. The agility on this knife, it's got that. And you've got an insanely comfortable handle here as well. Injection molded, much like the Becker, and bolted into place onto the full tang. So, so good. You've got a little more of a manageable size, as I mentioned, even though on paper it's more than it is in person. What you do give up over the classic K-Bar in addition to that skosh of reach is, like any of these uh, more heavily contoured knives, it's maybe less, uh, less conducive to larger handed folks. That's definitely something where that classic K-Bar has always excelled. It works for just about anyone. So if you have really big hands, the Harsey Fighter here might not be uh, the thing you need but if you don't have really big hands, I have slightly larger than average hands myself, they feel great. I'll mention the sheath on this Harsey as well. It is injection molded and it clicks in. You've actually got a safety button right there. So even if the strap comes undone, even if someone's trying to remove this from your sheath when you don't want it to, or want them to, it's still simple to get out when you want to. Other quick little differences, just to mention before moving on, uh, you've got a higher flat grind than the K-Bar, but you've got slightly thicker blade stock. Might be a little more slicey, but probably not too far different between them. More acute tip with that long straight clip point in this case. One more with contoured handles right here as a possible other option and a little bit uh, outside of what you might've thought would be a K-Bar alternative, and that's from Condor Knife and Tool with the Enduro right here. It's a bit more expensive than the K-Bar, about $129, 420HC steel, but it has got that same roughly seven inch blade. And even though it's slightly tantoized, its form factor is living in like the exact same neighborhood, same zip code, same neighborhood, same street as the K-Bar. Check it out. You've got a saber height flat grind, no swedge in this case, but the real star in this one is the handles there. Paper Micarta with a high polish. They look great. The contour feels excellent as well. And even though it feels a little bit heavier inside the actual hand than the K-Bar, it still has that same agility that is so appreciated of that classic K-Bar design. Now, part of the reason for the price of this knife is actually the sheath. Leather sheaths can be fairly inexpensive to produce. Kydex sheaths, however, costs a little bit more, especially since they are molded to fit every particular knife. And that's what you get with the Enduro. A full fat Kydex sheath comes with a wraparound strap that helps hold the leather belt loop in place. But if you'd rather attach it some other way, you can get something like this large or this small tech lock, which will line up with the riveted holes right there and allow you to carry it horizontally or clip it to other gear very easily. And last but not least, if we're talking about beating the icon, everything so far has kind of been a reinterpretation of the classic K-Bar format. Well, we're gonna at least show one kind of token example of modern combat knife styling, which has much the same size or can have much the same size as the classic K-Bar, but don't always hew to 
that clip point style, that hunting, elongated hunting knife style. Check out this Hogue knife right here. This is the EXF01. Drop point or Tonto blade shapes are available, but it's got that same seven inch format that just works so well. It's a good enough size for combat usage while not being so big and so much that infantry aren't gonna be able to carry it. You've got A2 tool steel here, which is plenty tough in addition to holding a good edge, almost a quarter inch thick, definitely a little bit heavier than the, uh, the classic K-Bar, but I don't wanna say it's not too much heavier. There's, there's a noticeable difference there, so keep that in mind. Uh, when deciding whether to include this in your kit. It's not an unmanageable weight, but if you're going for, you know, ounces equal pounds, pounds equal pain, this might not be your first choice. But you'll notice right on the back of this is another name that truly matters, Alishowitz. Alan Alishowitz is a combat veteran and knows a thing or two about designing knives and knows a thing or two about the needs of the modern soldier. And this knife was his answer to that. And man, are they comfortable. You've got contoured G10 handles. Again, if you have really big hands, you might lose out a little bit on this knife because my slightly larger than average hands are fitting in there just so, and they work really well for me. You've got the striking point on the back thanks to the protruding tang. You've even got one of my favorite little features here, just a nice little Easter egg, a little driver to adjust the tension on those bolt-on scales. Sits right there, right where you need it, so you're not gonna lose it. Most likely not gonna lose it. There you go. Plenty of other modern combat knives are available. Like I said, that is just one example. We have to include it just for the sake of the argument. And the argument is, what's the best combat knife you can buy nowadays? Is it the Icon, the classic K-Bar USMC fighter, as this version is, marked US Marine Corps? Or is it one of these other knives? Or is it something that's not on the table right now? And that is, where we can't make the determination and we have to ask you your opinions. Let me know in the comments. Do any of these knives truly beat the icon? Or is there another knife out there that does it? Let us know. In the meantime, if you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description. They'll take you to knifecenter.com. While you're there, don't forget about our long running Knife Rewards program, because if you're gonna buy one of these knives today, the cool thing is you'll get to earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. Thanks for sticking around. See you next time.